Billy Andrade said that when he was growing up, the Ryder Cup wasn't that big of a deal. And it wasn't 30 or 40 years ago. It didn't have the same promotion and hype that it enjoys today, and certainly not the coverage from the first tee shot to the final putt. Same for the Solheim Cup. It took about 10 years for it to develop some traction and an audience that it enjoys today. Perhaps someday, the World Champions Cup will have the same or enjoy the same stature that the Ryder Cup and Solheim Cup have. I hope so because I'm here at the inaugural World Champions Cup at Concession Golf Club in Bradenton, Florida. This is my update from the event. The golfers are all on the golf course, earning points for their team. Europe has jumped out to an early lead. Um, I'm going to link to my preview episode in the, in the show notes below. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the format, the golfers, and more about Concession Golf Club. Enjoy. The opening ceremonies were hosted by the always entertaining Peter Jacobson. He invited Tony Jacklin to hit the ceremonial first tee shot. Jacklin lives in the area and designed the golf course with Jack Nicklaus. He won the 1969 Open Championship at Royal Lytham in St. Anne's and the U.S. Open in 1970 at Hazeltine in Minnesota. He played on seven Ryder Cup teams and was captain for four consecutive matches starting in 1983, winning twice and then leading the European team to a tie, still only the second tie in Ryder Cup history. The first tie was in 1969 when Nicholas conceded a final putt, the namesake for Concession Golf Club. An amazing career, and he is rewarded, thanked, by having to hit the ceremonial drive over water into a breeze, and it was about 54 degrees. It, I was freezing. Jacqueline is a pro, even at 79. He piped one down the middle, a very, very good sign for the event. All of these guys, as I've said before, have written the history of golf over the last 30 or 40 years. Bernhard Langer is simply the best senior golfer ever. Uh, Stricker may follow in his footsteps, but he's got a long way to go. I watched VJ grinding on the range. It's amazing that he's still past parallel on his backswing. And Darren Clark makes a really nice move on the ball. I love watching these guys on the practice tee. All are flexible and make I watched Miguel Angel Jimenez go through his unique stretch routine. He makes it look very easy. Yes, Parnvik tried to follow him going through the same moves, and Parnvik is fit and limber and could not follow Jimenez. The full bit is at the World Champions Cup Twitter feed, and it's really good. The atmosphere is loose, but from the interviews I watch, these guys are competitive and they want to win. It's really no different than the $5 Nassau I play with my golf buddies. It's not the money that matters, it's the competition and the challenge. And I would imagine for professional golfers who've been to the heights that these guys have been, those challenges and competitions still mean a lot. And that's what makes it so much fun to watch. Cody Cox, one of the pros on staff at Concession, took me through many of the nine holes and gave me his perspective on the golf course. Thanks again, Cody. I mentioned in my preview post that Concession was tight with not a lot of room for bailouts, but that's not actually true. The course would be tight for me, focused on trying to get over the water, but not for elite golfers. They have many options for tee shots on most holes. Concession is a second shot golf course. Cody explained that the greens were not big, they're actually quite small. The green complexes are huge, as are many of the collection areas. Danger lurks everywhere. Front, back, sides, you have to be precise hitting the greens to score on this golf course, or you can get into a lot of trouble very quickly. The greens are slick, running at 12 and a half this week, but when you factor in the slopes, it can be hard to keep the putts on the green. And we did see a few long putts settle in the fringe in the first two rounds. And these guys are all exceptional putters. There is water on every hole, and there's always wind out here. Cody said it's either very still or blowing pretty good at concession. The property is pristine with lots of wetlands, and you can't see any houses from the golf course. Concession is golf and nature. One other item I did not mention in the preview, the teams remain the same for both the morning and afternoon matches. 
The pairings were the same on both days on both teams, which is a disappointment, though it matters less because everyone on the, each team plays in every session. I guess I was thinking of the Ryder Cup and Solheim Cup and all the thought and strategy that goes into the pairings. But for these guys over nine holes, perhaps they're looking for a routine and not changing things up. I watched all of the groups in the Sixums, that is the best ball and the Scotch Sixums, the modified alternate shot. It got a bit confusing with six balls in the fairway, especially the first few holes, but all of the golfers seemed conscious of moving the matches along. I also watched the broadcast for a bit on ESPN. The scoring was a bit confusing, probably because the scoring is completely new, and I've not heard anyone say they've played it or seen this format before. I'm not really sure what to call it. It's not match play. It's not stroke play. It's threesomes or maybe tri-match or WCC match play. I don't know. Regardless of the name, I think as hoped for, the format is unique and interesting to watch, and it keeps all golfers involved on all holes, hopefully keeping the matches close. The singles matches on the final day will be interesting. And again, I'm looking forward to spending the day at concession.